Hi. <clears throat> um, my name is Kate Egan, and I am going to be your instructor for this course, Wellness 760, which is titled An Introduction to Holistic Complementary Integrative Health and Medicine. And so for this first week, I would like to just mostly orient you to the course. Um, you've already seen a video, hopefully, that kind of walks you through the Canvas course and orients you to the sort of the nuts and bolts of how the class is going to work. This, of course, is an online class, um, which means that we are going to be doing all of our interacting um, via this sort of online platform. And as we go, I'm going to um, attempt to try to make this as a dynamic of an experience as possible, as an online class can be. Um, and I, of course, welcome any suggestions from any of you that are willing to participate in that process also. So um, pretty much what's going to happen every week is we are going to have um, one or two recorded lecture videos like this one. And then you're going to have some assignments, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we'll have some discussions. And, and um, I think what I'm going to try to do is also to do some sort of live lecturing conference type um, um, exchanges as well, just to make it a little bit more dynamic. But we'll kind of talk about that as we go. So what I want to do here is just kind of give us an idea of what we're going to be talking about in this class, because it's a pretty big topic. And we're all bringing different things to the table. Uh, we have different maybe objectives as to why what it is that you're interested about this topic. And so what I'm going to try to do is kind of try to introduce it in a very broad sense and then direct it as necessary, um, especially if I can kind of direct it towards um, certain interests that you students might have. So a little bit of background information on me. You've already gotten a little bit of this, but I am a practicing naturopathic physician as well as, um, a, prof as a professor. And I've been teaching for quite a long time and practicing for quite a long time in the 20 year range now. Um, I am tra trained as a naturopathic doctor. I practice um, naturopathic medicine slash functional medicine, which we'll talk a little bit more about uh, as we get going, what that exactly is. Um, I have a focus on, uh, on autoimmune disease and women's health, but mostly autoimmune disease is where I spend the majority of my practice energy. Um, and then of course I teach as well, and I am uh, just a part-time instructor at Skyline College, but I'm a full-time instructor at uh, another college and I teach um, in the biology department. I teach anatomy and physiology, uh, pathophysiology, and pharmacology, which is kind of an interesting combination given that I'm a naturopathic doctor and I spend the majority of my time talking about drugs. So it's very, it's been a very interesting career for me. I get to sort of have my feet in both the conventional or allopathic world, if you will, and also in this more alternative or complementary or integrative space, which I think integrative is probably the best word to use to describe anything that's an adjunct to conventional medicine. So what we're going to try to do in this class is we're going to try to kind of introduce you to a lot of these different options and sort of see how they all fit and what the what the utility is of them and, ha and how they can work together. I think that, in, at least from my perspective, that's one of the most important things is how can we build a really comprehensive um, system for all of us that are looking to live better, live healthier, live longer, you know, really maximize the time that we have here. So that's sort of my goal. Um, you, this in, this is my instructor information, which you've also already seen on Canvas, and it's there for you, but I just want to reiterate. Um, you see my email address there? That's my school email address. I am going to be pretty good about checking email. Um, I believe you can email me right out of Canvas, at least that's how it works at my school. 
I gave you my f phone numbers, my own personal phone numbers, which I generally don't do, but because I am not on campus, because I am teaching this class online and I'm teaching one other class for you guys, a botanical medicine class as a hybrid, um, since I'm not going to be on campus that frequently, I feel that giving my phone number might be the easiest way to get me. I would ask you to um, only use that phone number in case of an emergency, and if it's not an emergency, if you'd email me, that would be great. And then if it is something that we can talk to about on the phone, or, or, or also in Canvas, um, there's a really great setting in Canvas where we can video conference um, or just conference, audio conference, however we'd want to do it. Um, and that's a, a really good option for us as well. And we can set that up if you have any concerns and you want to have a face-to-face -face meeting with somebody that's not actually on campus. That's a way that we can do it. So those two phone numbers, the one on the top is my cell phone number. The one on the bottom is a home phone number. I travel back and forth regularly between Southern California and Northern California. So that bottom number um, is my home phone number in Northern California, um, which the only reason why I put them both is because if I happen to be there. I live in a place where there's no cell phone reception. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. And so in that case, the um, the 707 number would be the one that you would need to get me. But again, my preferred contact is email. I will check my email daily. Um, if you and respond to my emails daily, in a Monday through Friday kind of a situation unless something comes up in which case I'd send an email out saying I'm not going to be available today because I have a meeting or etc. Um, on the weekends I'm less likely to check my email uh, multiple times um, so if you send me an email on the weekend just know that you might not hear back from me until Monday. I usually do check my email on the weekend but just not quite as regularly. So that's my contact information. Um, if anything wasn't clear or you want some additional information on that, just shoot me an email and we'll go through it, go into it in a little bit more detail. Okay, so again, this is the first week of the class and it's just an opportunity for us to kind of get acquainted. Um, so in the, in, and sort of, I'd like you to sort of see how these video lectures are gonna look. You won't always see my face. Um, sometimes you will and sometimes you won't. It's a little bit hard uh, to lecture with the camera because I am feeling like I'm always looking all over the place, looking at the screen and then trying to look at the camera. So I don't always have the camera, um, but I, I will do it with, with some degree of regularity just because I think it makes it a little tiny bit more engaging if you're sitting in front of your computer. Um, I'm gonna try to break, keep these things relatively short, no longer than a half an hour. Um, and that's just so you can, you know, have to com you know, commit to so much time. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the description of the course, which you can see on your syllabus as well. But this is, again, an, introduc an introductory course, and the goal is to really, really kind of lay down the framework for understanding all these different holistic health disciplines, of which there are so many. Um, to try to figure out what what each of these do, what sort of what they stand for, you know, kind of their philosophical basis, their scope of practice when applicable. Um, we'll be looking at websites for associations, professional associations for say naturopathic medicine or chiropractic or osteopathic. Um, so you can kind of get a feel for what these people do and what they stand for. I think you'll see that there's sort of this like unifying theme that runs throughout all holistic practices from, you know, oste osteopathic medicine all the way to something like homeopathy or <clears throat> vibrational medicine. And this sort of this like holistic concept, which we're going to kind of get into in the next um, few lectures. So, but that's basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the history, the philosophy, the theory, the practice of these different complementary and alternative um, medical practices that are being used currently with a lot of frequency in the United States. Um, our topics are going to be osteopathic medicine, um, chiropractic, naturopathic medicine, Chinese medicine, acupuncture, a little bit on Ayurveda. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about functional medicine because I feel like that kind of is something that's 
uh, relative gaining quite a bit of traction and and um, I think deserves an explanation and what you'll see is that's really kind of a combination of a lot of these disciplines um, we're going to talk about homeopathy we'll talk a little bit about mind-body medicine and meditation we're going to talk about body work massage different types of body work uh, we'll talk about yoga as a practice uh, a, a wellness practice and um, we're going to also talk a little bit about music and uh, music theory, you know, pardon me, music therapy and um, sound healing. And we might throw some other stuff in there as well as time permits. So again, really what we're trying to do is we're just trying to introduce you to what a lot of these practices so you have some way to know what it is that they are all about, maybe their strengths and their weaknesses you know, how, how and when they may be appropriate and, and in some cases may not be appropriate to be utilized. Um, all right, so in this class, before I should say, before we really dive into this, I would like to kind of introduce some terms because this can be a tiny bit confusing. Right, so you see on the, the sort of the banner on that slide, it says holistic medicine. And that's probably a good way to start to approach this. And I think the thing about holistic medicine is, or, the, or sort of like the underlying tenet, if you will, of holistic medicine, is it's a, a method by which we really look a little bit deeper at what's driving maybe disease processes in humans. Um, so it's not just about, you know, chasing their symptoms and kind of trying to palliate those symptoms or alleviate those symptoms. It's a much broader kind of approach, really looking at the individual and how their symptoms may be unique to them and then address those individual symptoms from that individual perspective. So it's like, you know, you hear these, a lot of these buzzwords, treating the whole person, that's kind of what this means, right? So treating the whole person means just simply looking at somebody as a whole and then trying to figure out how or why they may have some of these challenges and or um, disorders and or symptoms and trying to kind of step back and and look at it from a more comprehensive perspective. I think that would be um, a way to kind of un to sort of un try to understand what holistic medicine is all about. I like to use the term upstream, so it's an upstream approach, right, rather than a downstream approach. So, for example, like a downstream approach would be somebody has high blood pressure and we give them a medication for blood pressure. That would be what you would see in the kind of the conventional slash allopathic, those two words are oftentimes used interchangeably, paradigm, you know, where you have a symptom and then you have a treatment for that symptom. And in most cases, that treatment is going to um, be geared just towards alleviating, you know, those symptoms, not necessarily or oftentimes not actually trying to figure out, well, why is it that they have high blood pressure to begin with? So if you were to look at that person as a whole, then you might ask the question, why does this person have high blood pressure? High blood pressure is, is downstream, right? The upstream causes of the high blood pressure is what we would be kind of more interested in from this holistic approach. All right, so again, back to these terms. There's terms that are used, and um, I want to just kind of work our way through them. First is alternative medicine. Now, this term, I think, has... Although it is still used, I think we're uh, trying to move away from the term alternative because it's um, not totally correct in, in terms of how a lot of these systems are operating. Alternative medicine, if you just look at the t word and the, in, from, a, from a kind of a definition standpoint, is used to express medical approaches or approaches to health and or healing that are separate from conventional or allopathic medicine. So that's why they use alternative. So instead of doing this, you would do that as an alternative. And in some cases, that is still that, that term is still useful. But I think um, it, we've, we're evolving away from that those terms and new, using now more oftentimes we're using complementary and alternative. 
So complementary and alternative, and oftentimes this gets abbreviated as, 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 it to, as CAM. So CAM therapies or complementary and alternative um, therapies kind of replaced alternative medicine because it sort of opens it up from this broader into this broader playing field, right? So we're looking at a broader range of philosophies and or approaches that are either going to stand alone you know, as an alternative to conventional medicine, or in more case, more often than not, and, and in my opinion, it's just my opinion, but um, and from my perspective, I think it's nice to kind of think of all of these things as an adjunct to conventional care, right? So you would put them all together and look at the strengths and the weaknesses of both. So complementary and alternative can be standalone, in which case we're thinking more like alternative, or with complementary, we're thinking of an adjunct, something that kind of kind of um, potentiates, if you will, the conventional care or go alongside the conventional care. So again, it's more of a, it's more of a holistic sort of approach, and it's more of a um, it's more inclusive rather than being divisive. That I think, from again from my perspective, where we really want to go with this information is looking at this as an a very inclusively like how can this all fit together what do all of these these practices have in common versus divisive where one is better or worse or how, this is all or nothing that kind of an approach it doesn't seem to be very useful um, from my perspective all right so that's what cam therapies are or complementary and alternative and i think now we current day we're getting even more used to the term integrative and um this term is newer it's largely replaced complementary and alternative although you'll still see all of these use these these sorts of um, terms used interchangeably and um, frequently. But integrative medicine is the newest and I think the most preferred by definitely educational institutions and governmental agencies. And again, it's that integrative nature, that inclusiveness, right? How can we, how do all of these pieces fit together? Because I think what the objective is for all practitioners that are looking at health and healing from w w whatever lens they happen to be focusing through, we all share a um, commonality in that we're just trying to do the best for the people that we're serving, right? And so this integrative term, I think, is the most applicable because it does integrate all of these different options. So I think that's the one that we're, we'll you see from this point forward most frequently. So there's just a rundown of, you know, in a kind of a general sense, what, what this stuff is all about and where we're gonna be going with this. Another thing I kind of wanted to touch on for a minute was in the, t in, in the um, course description, we say um, holistic, complementary, um, integrative health and medicine. And I intentionally like I, I intentionally have those two terms because when we look at integrative health, it's inherently interprofessional. It's integrative, right? We're taking different schools of thought, different ideas, different concepts, different practices, and we're trying to integrate them into one one system, if you will, in which we will be best serving our clients and or patients. And um, so it's not just about medicine. Really what it's about is it's about health, right? It's about, it's about changing the way we do things to make it more about vitality and health and less about symptoms and diseases. And so, you know, the medical part of this is really a small bit of this whole puzzle, right? It's a small picture of healthcare. You know, and it's really traditionally medicine, at least how we do it in the conventional paradigm, is it's really, again, looking at diagnosis, diagnosing, looking at symptoms, diagnosing diseases and treating symptoms and or diseases, right? It's very, it's very limited in a sense, right? Um, n historically, it's not all that preventative, right? I mean, prevention is nice, but that's not really the way that it's generally done. Um, 
So there's all kinds of people that are that are working on the kind of the front lines of health, um, and they're not medical doctors, and they're not doing medicine per se, but they are still using their skills to teach people how to live a better life, live a more healthy life. You know, that's where like the mind body, the meditation, the yoga, Ayurveda, all of that comes in. And so um, I think that we, again, we, we want to um, expand our, our, our view to include more professionals, include more people. And I, I imagine that many of you in this class, and as we get rolling, I'll hopefully get to know a little bit about your backstories and what, what it is that you do and what it is that you're interested in. But I think all of us are gonna probably be coming at this from, from, a, from different perspectives. Some of you may not be interested in the sort of the professional side of this at all, and you might just be here because you want to learn a little bit more about the topic, right? In which case, you're still very invested in this concept because we're moving, hopefully, or, or you know, again, this, this is sort of controversial maybe, but we are at a place where this system that we have in place in the United States is kind of in a state of upheaval, right? There's a lot going on with healthcare in the United States. Uh, lots of debate and lots of feelings one way or the other. And I think what we're, if we can kind of let that go, what I think we're going to, what we will be able to agree on this is, is what we're doing right now is not particularly working, right? Our the health statistics are pretty horrible, right? In, in, in such a developed country, I think as of last I checked, we are like number 37 in terms of, I actually might even be worse. Um, in terms of vital health and health and um, and and um, a lifespan and all of that of the developed world, so we're for the not, num for the amount of resources we have available to us, we're not doing so well, and so I think what we're going to see, what we are starting to see, and and one of the reasons why I was so interested in teaching this class is to ha open this dialogue and have this conversation around like how can we do this better, and I, I at least in the, in the space that I operate from in this like naturopathic slash functional medicine space, there's a lot of talk about, you know, really overhauling this system and changing. And I love that quote there on the slide that says, you'll never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, to build a new, build, we have to build a new model that makes that existing model obsolete. And there's a lot of push, at least from the space that I operate from, to like really overhaul this whole deal and, and, and change it and make it better, right? Make it more inclusive and make it more about health, make it more about prevention, make it more about longevity and less about, you know, end of, you know, disease management, I guess, is a good way to think about it. So the health and medicine part of this go together, right? And I really want to emphasize that it's that, that if we're going to approach this from an integrative sort of perspective, that we have to open it up to all different sorts of inter, interprofessionals, right? All different sorts of people who have something to offer, you know, from health coaches to yoga teachers and anywhere in between, right? We have all sorts of things that are dispensed and people, there are all kinds of people operating in these spaces that are, that are a whole, all kinds of information that's useful to us. Okay. So here's a quick, some, some things we're going to talk about. Um, I found this picture out of a, a article actually that was, that was um, published in a, in a scientific journal, Nature, which one is Nature um, Immunology, which is one of the most rigorous of the scientific journals. But this um, article that I read was looking at some of these different integrative therapies. And at the time, they, we were thinking this is an older, a little bit of an older article, and we were still referring to these as CAM, or Complementary Alternative Medical Practices. But you can kind of see. So these are the sorts of things we're going to talk about, right? So um, in, in the next video, I'm going to kind of explain what, how, why they're divided like they are, right? So historically, we've divided CAM therapies, and this is the government that's done it. Um, into biologically based approaches and that's where diets herbs supplements vitamins kind of come in and then we go going for going this way clockwise we look at manipulative and body-based therapies that's where osteopathic medicine historically although it's moved away from that largely but osteopathic medicine has a big manual medicine component in their in their philosophy in their history and training chiropractic goes in here all the body work modalities can go in here you know, just massage to Heller work, Rolfing, craniosacral therapy, those kinds of things. 
Um, and then we have our mind-body interventions. If we continue to go clockwise, that's where yoga, spirituality, relaxation, meditation, all of that would fit in. Um, biofeedback actually is a really great modality. We could put that in there. Um, then we have our sort of alternative medical systems. Um, and that's where uh, we might put in naturopathic medicine. Um, although naturopathic medicine is, is, well, we'll get to that later, but it sort of combines all of this. Uh, homeopathy, Ayurveda, um, you could throw in, uh, and I don't know why it's not on the slide there, but I would put Chinese medicine and acupuncture in there as well. And then going further into our energetic realm. And again, you could argue homeopathy. Actually, I would personally put homeopathy over in the energy realm. Reiki, magnets, qigong, those kinds of things. Um, so, and, and of course, that's not inclusive. There's all sorts of other things that we could put on this slide. It's just what I found as a picture. So that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to sort of talk about these from different perspectives as we go through. Starting, we're going to start with um, kind of the medical systems, uh, osteopathic medicine, chiropractic medicine, naturopathic medicine, and then I'm going to introduce functional medicine. And I'll start with those because they're a little bit more comprehensive. And then we'll kind of go um, at the other ones from different sort of different approaches. All right. so. In the next video, we're going to get into some nuts and bolts of who's actually using these integrative or CAM therapies, but just in sort of a general, um, just kind of like to sort of think about this for a minute in terms of why people are using integrative therapies. And one of the assignments this week I'm going to ask you is just um, if you have used any and what they, what you've used and what your experience was of those, um, or if you have a particular interest in one and why. Um, but let's think a little bit about why people are actually using these integrative therapies. And again, this is not all of the things, which is sort of what I could, what I come up, could come up with when I was just sitting thinking about it myself. Um, you hear a lot about people that are dissatisfied with either their healthcare providers or their outcomes. And there's lots of reasons for this. Um, and I think it's a built sort of inherent in the system uh, as the system has become more complex. There's been this growing level of dissatisfaction by the patients. You know, th you hear things like, they don't spend any time with me. I have a five minute visit. They're always rushed. They don't ask me that many questions, etc." Or I have these medications and um, I don't like the way I feel, or they don't give me other, any other options, these sorts of things. Side effects of drugs are big. Um, high health costs are huge. That's another th reason why people are not really wanting to use, to, or, or moving towards integrative therapies. Um, although there's oftentimes high health, or high costs, pardon me, associated with some of these integrative therapies, and that's one of the challenges that we'll talk a little bit about. Too much technology, things are becoming less touch oriented and more, you know, more machine driven, if you will. I think um, a big issue, whether people know it or not, um, is what I wrote down as a lack of control in their own health practices. I'm a big believer in people, per the, the patient and the practitioner having this sort of participate participatory relationship, right? It's not a, I tell you to do this and you do it kind of a deal. That doesn't really work. It's, it needs to be more, more inclusive, right? It needs to be more of a relationship, more of a partnership, I guess is the word I'm looking for. And so I think that the way our system is set up is we, we don't have a partnership. We have a you know, you go to the doctor, they tell you to do something and you do it. And oftentimes, and it depends on the doctor and some are very open to questions and some are not. It sort of just depends on what kind of practitioner you're seeing. But I think people inherently would like to have more control over their own health practices. They'd like to be more empowered in their, in their health healing process. So that's a lot, I think that's one of the things, at least from, from feedback that I've received from patients, that's one of the, that's one of the things that I've heard a lot from people is that 
um, they don't feel like they're really all that involved and they want to be more involved. So education is big. A lot of these integrative therapies um, really uh, lean heavily on, on educating patients and people in terms of what they need to do to be healthy and how to maintain their health, you know, and so they can really do it themselves. They shouldn't need to have somebody, you know, jabbing them each step of the way. And then I mentioned previously the time spent with a practitioner. So these are just some of the reasons. And again, like I said, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into who's actually look at some statistics in terms of who's actually using these therapies and what that all means. Okay, so what I'm going to, what I'm going to request for you guys to do before we get much further into this um, is I'd like you to watch this film that I um, really enjoyed and it's called Escape Fire. And the reason why I'm choosing to show it to this class is because it is a look, I think, a pretty honest look at the current system, healthcare system in the United States. And they have some pretty shocking um, statistics. And what it's really trying, what, what my objective here is, is to really help you, h hope that you see maybe why some of these integrative practices could be useful and could be helpful and could fit to make this a better system, right? And like that quote we just saw you saw earlier, you know, we can't just, we can't really at this point, from, again, this is my opinion, but at this point, we can't really save this system. We have to, it needs to be overhauled. And I think this film does a great job of showing, yeah, okay, we need to, something needs to be done. And there are things that can be done and things that can work. And, um, and, and that's kind of where we are right now. So I am going to, in a folder on Canvas, um, I'm going to put a link to a YouTube link to the video. I, I will preface that by saying it's not a great, it's a free recording, right? It's so, it, but it's not gr the best quality. I am going to, um, I've sent a copy of the movie to Dr. Wimmer, who is uh, the coordinator for this wellness program. So she's going to have a copy of the movie. Um, if some of you would like to, if you're on campus, I, I, again, I at this point I'm pre-recording this vi this before um, the semester starts, so I don't really know who anybody is. But if you guys are on campus and you want to grab the movie from her um, and watch it as uh, some of you together as a group, that would be awesome. You can also rent it from Netflix, but it's not a play instantly. And um, I believe... Uh, it's not on Amazon Prime either as a play instantly. So um, you may be able to get it from a library, but um, but if here the, it, this is perfectly fine. This YouTube version of it, it's just not the. I think someone like recorded it from with their phone or something, because you can sort of see a glare off of the TV. But you'll get the you get the you'll get the gist of it. It's just not the best recording ever. Um, so after you watch the video um, in Canvas for this first week, there's going to be a prompt for some questions that I would like for you to answer. And um, we will pick it up next with a um, discussion on this Escape Fire film. And then uh, we'll be talking a little bit more, in a little bit more detail about sort of the holistic theory and, and again, a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of what this whole thing is going to be about. So for now, um, I welcome you to the class. Um, I think it's going to be fun. Any suggestions that you have in, ter in terms of making this more interactive will be much appreciated. I know uh, online classes are inherently a little bit challenging to stay with, but I'm going to try to keep this, these, these pieces short enough and manageable enough so that it's not going to be too laborious on your part. So thank you for enrolling. I look forward to sharing the semester with you and we will pick this up after you see the film in week two.